too. Okay, that's great. All right. <clears throat> so we are listening and step by step from the beginning. All right. So you should say everything, including the rhythmicity, heart rate, and so on, and so on. All right. Uh, so it's uh, rhythmic. Mm -hmm. Um, the heart rate is around seventy-five beats per minute. Mm -hmm. Um, the sinus rhythm is present, even though it's like the P waves are extremely small. Uh, I could sometimes barely see them. All right. Um. And uh, there is ST elevation, like here. I don't know if you can see my uh, mouse. And what was the axis? Uh, oh, the axis, I didn't do that. Uh, uh, the sorry. PR interval, and that's one, that's one. So you should say everything. <clears throat> uh, so since the lead one is positive, it should be on the right side of the axis. And um sorry i need to pull up this circle okay or i can read it but just like so that. which is the smallest one which is the smallest one that's the easy way uh the free oh no the avf okay. avf okay so avf is the smallest one it's meaning we are perpendicular to avf AVF is in 90 degree, yes? Okay, yes. so we are looking at 90 degree, which is perpendicular to 90, that's zero, or another one is 180. The lead number one is positive, so the axis is around zero, that's it. And because AVF a little bit positive, it's meaning that a little bit more than zero, so you can add about 10 degrees to it, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Now, the next one, you said that the PPR interval is okay, all right? Q, the width of the QRS? Um, uh, it's uh, 2, so it's 0.04. It's normal, so it's normal, all right? So the QRS width is normal, so there is... There are no intraventricular conduction abnormalities here at all. So it's nor AV. So we don't have any kind of conduction problem. Okay. The next one, if you go, this is the Q wave. <clears throat> Do we see any Q wave in the QRS complex? Uh, yeah. Okay. But we are talking about the Q, whether the Q is wider and deeper than Okay, wider than one millimeter and deeper than one fourth of the R. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No, it's not. No. So, yes, we do have Q wave, but in normally in lead number two, in the left ventricle leads, we can see Q wave. But this Q is not one fourth of the R and not as wide as no more than one millimeter. That's fine. So there is no, especially if you evaluate the Q wave, that Q wave that represents, for example, necrosis should be found at least two consecutive leads. So if, for example, if you do see, for example, pathological Q wave in lead number two, you should see it in AVF as well or lead number three. If you do see in lead number one, you should look at AVL again, or you should look at V5, V6, because these are the lateral leads, okay? Would we consider that the AVL has any P wave? No, P, -P, -P wave, also P wave and... Uh... Well, I don't see any P wave here, but it doesn't matter, and there is no Q wave as well, so it's nothing. But in the AVF, this small one is a Q wave. Yeah, but that's, yeah, but that's a small one. It's not a pathological one. It's not so, it's not deep, not wide. That's it. So there's no sign of necrosis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go on. And as I mentioned before, like there are uh, ST elevations 
Okay, very good. So let's see, we do see ST elevation in lead number one. Oops, lead oh, number one. No, it's, uh, you can reduce a little bit because it's much easier or much nicer to see it. Further, please, further. We want to see the all 12 leads. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to erase this one and this way I can make notes. All right, so. We do see in lead number one, lead number two, okay. We see in AVL, yes, so far. We do see it in V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, okay. So relatively almost all leads, we do see this ST elevation, okay. But then also in V1, consider it as uh, ST well, is. No, that should be a little depression. If you get closer, now you can get closer, please, because it's much easier to see it, okay? And if you compare the ST segment, for example, to compare this PR to this one, you see that's a depression, <clears throat> about one millimeter depression. This is one thing. And another thing, if you are looking at this ST segment, you use this kind of notches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do see almost every lead, we do see this S elevation. And relatively, it's a very high extension. And if I would say the anamnestic sign, and this patient could have some chest pain, uh, when is uh, sitting or why the position is inf uh, influences it in supine position especially or in deep inspiration what would you say that is a heart attack no 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 that could be a pericarditis mm -hmm. so it's a, not a pure uh infarction because sometimes in a pericarditis the sign could be very similar to a mi and you can differential diagnose basically if you do see almost every leads plus you do see this kind of notches that i just pointed previously all right if you do see these notches and uh, another one if you look at the age but you don't see any anamnestic sign of this guy and uh, this is how you diagnose so pericarditis. So don't forget pericarditis associated with ST elevation. And usually the pain is not typical for MI or angina because the angina usually, the F4 angina, for example, that's uh, induced by exercise and usually it's very well localized to the uh, pericardium or it radiates to the fingers or the back or the, down to the stomach. So this can be the additional clinical sign of the patient. Okay. It was a hard one, I know, but uh, this can be pericarditis. You can meet with pericarditis. Okay. Anita uh, is not here. Yes, I don't see Anita. Uh, sir, okay. I have a question. Good. Uh, I don't really understand uh, the when you add the 10 degrees thing and and determining the electrical axis. Okay, but... Bianca maybe can tell you. To determine the electrical axis of the heart? Yeah, why did I give 10 degrees extra? Uh, this is what I asked, yes? Uh, because... Because... Uh, isn't it because the lead two is also positive and no like uh... no 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 first of all by using this equiphasic list this is what we found that this is almost zero it's not zero it's a little bit positive okay if we had a zero so it's meaning that the positivity and negativity should be equal in that case it should be lead number one because it has to be perpendicular to lead number one yes However, because this AVF is positive, so this is a little bit more than zero. This is why I given 10 degrees to it. Doesn't matter, five degrees, 10 degrees. It doesn't matter because the 
instrument, the ECG machine is going to write down the exact axis, except now because you are, if you are taking an exam, you have to know. It so was clear? We have to say those 10 degrees additional, we can't say zero. If it's not zero, exactly, yes. If it's a little bit positive, yeah, exactly. Or if you had a little bit negativity after you have to subtract it, that's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now let's see the next one is uh, Collins. He's not here either. Yeah, he's here. Wake up. Collins, you back. Yes, teacher. Good morning. Good afternoon. Well, good morning. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we are happy that you are here. Okay. Um no. So uh, Bianca, please magnify a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Okay, let's less, 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 less. Yes. Okay, good. Or uh, too much. Another one? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay. Now, Colin, let's see. Yeah, so um the heart rate is is above 100, so it's tachycardia. Okay. Yeah, and um if you have um lead one is um lead one is negative. Okay, you can say that is negative or exophasic, doesn't matter. Okay. It one is negative, so um I and AVR is also positive, so I think extreme right deviation around okay. um, hundred and ten. Okay. Degrees. All right. Yeah, go then, on. And P wave. There's P wave. P wave is present. Okay. Only two. But but the ST is ele ST is elevated. So I think uh mm -hmm. it's um and so is epic sub epicardia um lesion. Okay, before you go to the ST segment, first of all, you you said that you do see P waves. Fine, PR interval is okay. Okay, the QRS width of the QRS. Sorry, the width. How wide the QRS is? <clears throat> is it normal or not? If it's it's short. I don't think so. That's wide. See. From here to here. That is more than 0.1 seconds. So the QRS is wide. Okay. Okay. So what does it tell us that when the QRS is wide? We do see a sinus written. We do not see any AV block, but because the QRS is wide, we do have an intraventricular conduction abnormalities. Okay. And especially, you said that. We do have a pathological right deviation. Fine. Now, why the QRS is wide? So some kind of intraventricular conduction block we have. Which one? You have to look at the right leads and the left leads. Whenever you do see the wide R complex, the block is there. Where can you see the wide R complex? Wide R complex. Um. In V1 and V2, you can see it on the right side, yes? Yes. Okay, that means that we do have a right bundle branch block, a complete right bundle branch block. So, so far, what we diagnose, we diagnose an RBBB, okay? So the RBBB, all right. Now, the, la the last time we discussed this conduction anomaly, so we do have a RBBB plus, 
because we had a pathological right deviation additionally to this one we do have a right deviation means left posterior hemi block and how do you call these two things together when we do have a right bundle blanch block plus uh, enter a left posterior hemi block how would you call it this is the bifascicular block because two fascicle is missing so this is a bifascicular block okay yeah. now so so far we discussed that this is a conduction abnormality so far okay the next one, let's see, do we have pathological Q wave? Q, Q wave is? The first negative wave in a QRS complex. Yeah, we do in V1. V1, V2, V4. V5, okay? So we do see pathological Q waves. Plus, as you see here, we do see ST elevation as well. Okay? Yeah. So from V1 to V5, that's meaning this enteroceptal MI, okay? So because the septal is, this is the V1, V2, plus the anterior one, it's all affected, so that's the enteroceptal MI. And because we do have a Q wave plus ST elevation, okay, ST elevation we have. And here you do see this, this is a biphasic T wave here, and here is a negative T wave, but I would say there's a biphasic steam dome shape. That means we do have an acute phase. Acute STEMI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody understood? Hopefully. Okay. Let's move on. Number. The next one is uh, Dakin. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> it's yours. Um, the next is the heart rate is around the same five. Okay, for me, and the uh, axis is normal because the lead one is positive and David F is also positive. Okay, so that's normal. Okay, and when I see a lead two, I see the, <clears throat> the rhythm is rhythmic. So and I see also the P, and I can check the P, and QRS, why this normal. And when I see the lead okay. two, I, yep, okay. I can check the ST elevation, so it's the myocard and infarction. And it's a lead two, so I think it's the inferior part. Yeah, but let's wait a little bit. Let's wait. You said that there are P waves. Okay, fine. Very good. So that's a sinus rhythm. The next one, you should look at the PR interval. <clears throat> Get closer a little bit, Bianca, please enlarge it. Okay. Let's count how many millimeters we have. Okay, this is meaning that if I start to count here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it means that the PR interval is 0 0.24. Okay, if it's 0 0.24, so 0 0.24 second, what does it mean? Uh, yes, right. Low, 24 so. and nothing. 24 is high, 0 0.24 second. So it's meaning that we do have a... Maybe blue? Yeah, it's high, that's longer, not low. 
That means we do have a have the block blockage. Yes, we do have a first degree AV block. AV block, yeah. Okay. Now, you can go to the QRS complex now. Is it wide? No, it's not wide. Good. Next question. Do we see pathological Q waves? Mm. Uh, no. No. Well, a little bit here because that's one fourth of the R. Okay, it's almost the same as an R in lead number three, but there is no Q wave in lead number two or in AVF. It's meaning that that you cannot consider as a pathological Q wave. Okay. Okay. Next one, ST elevation. You said that. Okay, we do see ST elevation in two, three, and AVF. Yes. So. Meaning that this patient has, yes? Inferior part of infection. Okay, which phase? Um, only as the elevation we have. Nothing else. There is no Q wave. Only as the elevation is meaning? No acute. No. It's not acute. This is a hyper acute. Okay, or well, you can say the, st the STEMI. Okay. Yep. Now, inferior MI very commonly coming together with which other area could be affected if you do see a inferior MI? Is posterior? Okay. What could be the sign of a posterior MI? Because we, or we can put a, a VD of VD1, VD2, VD3, or continuation, you can have V7, V8, V9, but there is no, okay? Please, Bianca, a little bit go to the right side, to the chest leads, okay, very good. But we don't have any, so you have to rely on what you do see in the normal lead. In V1, you do see a ST depression, very similarly to V2, V3, okay? So what does it mean? So it's the anterior part. So it's okay. Exactly, exactly. We do see the mirror image of a posterior I mean, MI. So we do have an inferior posterior. Pardon me? No. I, we, we cannot hear you. What? Oh, sorry. The uh, I think it's the anterior part construction. So open. that's the inferior posterior hyperacute MI, or you can say STEMI, all right? Okay. All right, good. Now, let's continue and let's go to Enrique. Enrique? Oh, very yes, nice. Yes, uh, Okay. Okay, so, well, I think it's sinus rhythm. It's regular. It's monorhythmic. Okay, all right. And it has a heart rate of about 72 beats per minute. All right. I would say as a normal axis, because uh, lead one and ABF are positive, and lead okay. two is the highest, so it's around uh, plus 60. Okay. Uh, then there is a normal P wave, but there is an abnormal PR interval. It's shortened. Okay. Very good. This, uh, Very good. Since it, and because the PR is short and the QRS is wide, we, it means we have faster conduction. So it's okay, an extra very good. It, it's an excitation syndrome. Okay. Which one? And I think it's the WPW syndrome, the B type. All right, very good. B type. Very good. Very, very good. Okay. Now you can go for the pathological Q wave. Do we see pathological Q wave? Yes, in V1. We see okay. in V2. We do see in V1 and in V2. But there are they are in they invert because of the WP syndrome. Exactly. So this pathological Q wave is not due to ischemia. It's not due to MI. It's due to the delta wave, what is caused by the WPW syndrome. So this meaning that 
not every Q is a pathological Q wave. Okay, or not pathological, but it not represents any kind of uh, infarction. Okay, especially in WPW syndrome, for example. That's also, we have a, we have an yes? impression of the of the estic segment in okay, V6, very but good. this is not. It's also not due to ischemia. It's due to this, it's secondary to the WP syndrome. Very good. So. If we do have a problem with the conduction, with the depolarization, we do have a problem with the repolarization as well. So it's meaning that we do have a secondary STT change. Secondary STT meaning that we do have a reason why the ST segment is altered. If we have no explanation, that's B ischemia. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good, Enrica. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fereste is not here. No. Okay, let's move on. And if not here, uh, okay, you mean? Yep, I'm here. Okay, and yours is uh, 107. 107, yes, sir. Okay, one or okay. seven. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> well, um, that's so something. I, <laughs> first of all, it is rhythmic. Mm -hmm. And um, heart rate was 75 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. And for the axis, um, I see that L1 shows positive. Mm -hmm. And um, ABF also shows a positive. Uh -huh. So... The axis is normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. for the Q QRS width, I see that it was tricky because I think it's normal, but good. A Very good. Narrow. No, no, no. But it's okay. It... It's not. It's okay. normal. It's normal. Okay. All right. Um, I th at first I thought it was narrow, but um, why well, because narrow it's... cannot be narrow because it's going from the 0.04 to 0.1, so it's point of fact. So it is normal. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And for the pathological cue, um, for... before you jump to the pathological cue okay. wave, I do yes, not sir. like this kind of shape in V1 and V2. I also don't like it too. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, if you describe it an RSR, okay, RSR, RSR, again, what does it mean if you do see this kind of pattern? It's very, very characteristic of something. Um, this is, looks like an M. Yes, okay. Um, MDR? I'm not completely sure on that one. EPA. This is the right bound to bench block, but because it's not wide, this is incomplete. Uh -huh. uh, right. I see. But okay. that's an incomplete right bound to branch block. Okay, good. Now, but, um, yes. Yeah. Oh, I actually have a question on because I thought. Um, it was a wild guess, but um, I saw a T inversion on the V1. Okay, but that can be secondary due to the right bundle bench block. Okay. Um, is there... Okay. I couldn't differentiate in what cases I could say it's a subacute anterior and my. You, in subacute, you have to see Q with pathological Q with, but here, you have no Q. It's an R. No. Okay. Could so also no Q wave. yes. Could also ST segment elevation could be part of the um, factor for the subacute anterior MI? No. In subacute, no? there okay. is no ST changes. So the ST no segment ST is X I yes. Only what you do see the Q and the negative T wave. Only. Okay. Okay, yeah, yes, sir. Now, depending on what the patient has, any kind of signal, but I don't think that 
In lead number three, for example, a little ST elevation you do see here, okay? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in lead number AVF or in lead number two, you don't. So I won't say this kind of uh, MI can be, okay? So there's not okay. an MI. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, good. Let's move on. And the next one is Jingjing. Jing? Yes. So the the tracing is rhythmic and the heart rate is 85. Okay. And is they have normal PR and narrow normal QRS. So there's uh -huh. normal conduction. And okay. they got um ST elevate. Oh no, they got pathological Q waves in V1, V2, V3, and V4, and they also got ST elevations in uh, V2 and V3, so I think it's acute uh, anterior MI. Okay, yeah, so what you see here, okay, Q wave and ST elevation, so that means in an anterior, acute anterior. Only one thing, uh, yes, yeah, there is nothing Q wave in V5, V6, so this is why you should say it's only anterior and nothing else. Good. Very good, very, very good. Okay, that was great. Now, the next one is go, Marin? Yes. Uh, so I think it's uh, first of all rhythmic. Mm -hmm. The beat is about 67 beats per minute. And because okay. the wave looks the same throughout, uh, it's a sinus impulse. And the axis is about 90 degrees. In normal. Okay. Seeing how. Uh, Are you sure that the axis is okay? Because one is positive, but the uh, ABF is not. Uh, and if you look at this one, lead number two, I would say it's a little bit negative because it's wider. The second part of the QRS is wider, so you have to subtract a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's a extreme left deviation that we have, okay? Yeah. All right, go on. And seeing how there's a SD elevation, um, especially in like lead B2 and- Before you go to the ST elevation, let's revise the width of the QRS. Is it wide the QRS or not? Mm, looking at lead one, I think it's normal. I don't think so, because if you're getting closer, this is the width of the QRS, especially if you look at it in V1. Yeah, that's <laughs> wide. That's mm -hmm. wide. Okay, that's wide. Okay, again, so that's meaning that we do have a wide QRS meaning that we do have an intraventricular conduction abnormalities. And looking at V1 and V5 or V6, okay? Yeah. Where can you see the wider complex? In V1. So again, that's an RBBB, okay? So mm -hmm. the right bundle branch block. Plus, we do see the left, pathological left deviation. Mm -hmm. So again, we do see a right bundle branch block plus left anterior hemiblock. This is called mm. by fascicular block. It's not written here. Okay. So I don't know why, but it's not writing anything. So that's RBBB plus left anterior hemiblock. Watch out for these things because it's very commonly coming together, the right bundle bench block and the Pathological deviation, if you do have a left deviation, that's mean anterior hemiblock. If it's a right deviation, that posterior hemiblock, and that's the bifasticular block. Okay? Okay. Now, go on. So, so far, we do have a bifasticular block. Okay, next one, the mm -hmm. ST segment. You have to look at the ST segment. Mm -hmm. um, so, for the ST segment... Mm -hmm. um, I would say here as well. You can see ST elevation. Okay, and 
Here you can see Q wave in V1 and V2. Normally, you should see an initial R. Mm -hmm. So that means you do have an anterior STEMI, and I would say that's an acute. acute. All right, an acute yes. phase. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. You. You're welcome. Okay, so that was the 109. Yes, 109. So, Mohamed, that should be 110. Come on. Why not? He's not hearing us. Hello. All right. Finally. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is yours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 110. Uh so oh. it's uh yes. Hello? Yes, we are here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a normal uh, sinus rhythm. And the, the it's around ninety beats uh, per minute, uh -huh. and the axis is normal, uh -huh. and I check the QRS. The QRS uh, is normal, mm -hmm. and there's a P wave, mm -hmm. and there is a, a ST depression, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, I think that's about it. As the depression, yes. Yeah, so we do see and yeah. in the inferior leads, especially as the depression, and in the lateral one. So that can mean lesion. So angina. That is the sign of an angina. Okay. Oh, okay. So as the depression, the sign of angina, and usually the effort angina. And the unstable angina should be the same, except the prince metal angina, because prince metal angina is associated with ST elevation. Okay, good. All right, and uh, okay, Muhammad Khan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice ECG that you got. Okay. Um... The rhythmic, the heart rate is around 60, I think. Uh, there is a P wave, so mm -hmm. I think the PR, mm -hmm. it looks normal, less than 0.2. Um, the QRS looks narrow, so I think that's mm -hmm. okay as well. Um, and the axis is uh, normal as well, because you need one AVF are positive. Okay. Um, there, as there are some pathological Q waves uh, in V one and two, um, and so V one, V two, yes, very good. Okay. Uh, and there's also, I think, uh, some ST elevation maybe in V two. Okay. Okay, in V two, yes, you do see the ST elevation, so it's meaning that uh, we. I don't really know. Do you want. know because in V1, V2 means anterior, so that's an anterior acute uh, myocardial MR. Okay? Yeah. I don't so, really know anything else I can the, see. The localization, you have to learn the localization. Okay? That's important. Okay. Rivika? That should be 112. Yes. Okay. Um, I think it's rhythmic and <clears throat> the heart rate is about 60 beat per minute. Um, okay. The axis is normal. Mm -hmm. Speed one and ABF are both positive. And okay. um, P waves are normal and okay. PR interval as well. Um, the QRS complex is narrow, so it's normal. Um, 
and um, for pathological things, on um, lead V1 to V4 has ST elevation. Okay. So I think it's hyperacute anterior. Am I? Okay. I, it's, this ST elevation goes from V1 to V6. So that's in this case anterolateral because the V5, V6 is a lateral. Okay. So if you're looking at the heart, Heart is somewhere here, okay? Now, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, lead number one is right here. This is lead number one, okay? And AVL is here. So this is why that's an anterior, that's an apical V4, V5, that that's a lateral one, V5, V6 is a high lateral when you are talking about one and EVL. But if you do see an anterolateral, that's usually called the extensive uh, hyperacute MI. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Next one is 113. Yeah, that's mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so first of all, this is rhythmic due to the um, RR distance intervals being um, yeah, the same. And then for okay. the harsh rates, I okay. used the rule of 300 because it's rhythmic and I counted five and um, five or like five and a half boxes okay. in between the R mm -hmm. um, peaks. And so I would say it's around 55. Okay. Um. So it's bradycardic. Okay. Then, um, for the heart axis, I used the quadrant approach, and I saw that. Okay. Uh, lead one and lead one was positive, and then I looked at AVF, which is also positive. So I'd say it's located, um, within the normal axis. Very good. Um. Yeah, and then, so we have here we have P waves, but the. PR interval looks, I think it's a bit longer than it should okay, be. Okay, very good, very good. So the PR is longer, okay. Yeah, so that would mean that it's a first degree AV block. Okay, good. Um, All right, go on, QRS. Yeah, the QRS is also is wider Okay. Um, than it should be. So there's like a intraventricular conduction mm -hmm, abnormality mm -hmm. um so like the depolarization is prolonged um and you can see that the there's a like in v6 and v5 there's a notch mm -hmm. wave, mm -hmm, like a notch mm -hmm. wave and then also in v1 you can see a qs complex mm -hmm. And so with that, I would say it's a left bundle branch block because of those. Um, yeah. This is called? Oh, together it's a trifascicular. Um, very good, very good. So we do have a block. trifascicular block. Okay, now. Yeah. Now, well, go on. It's not oh, over yet. Um... It's a I'm tricky not one. Sure about the next part, but in V two, you can see like a ST depression. Doesn't matter bit. what you do I... see in V two, but you do see in V five, V six, an ST elevation. Uh, yeah, an elevation. Yeah. Okay, so what so, does it indicate? This I is not in... due to the left bundle bench block because left bundle no. bench block should call cause L S T depression. But because you do have an ST elevation, we do see this extensive anterolateral myocardial MI. Now, mm -hmm. if we do see left bundle bench block, very, very difficult to diagnose an anterior MI because itself it's causing QS complex. Okay, so this is why the pathological Q wave, but this is could be due to the left bundle bench block. However, if you do see ST elevation on the left side, that immediately can give you the sign that that's a MI, okay? okay? So now we do have a trifascicular block, 
plus extensive anterolateral acute MI. Okay. Okay. That was a very nice ECG. Okay. Uh, what is the next one? Is I think is 114 is Kivu. Good afternoon, sir. Can all you right. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So first of all, um, it show, as it shows the irregular heartbeats, mm -hmm. and and also uh, also it shows the the heart rate belongs to 65 to 70 beats per minute as mm -hmm. as there are like four squares. In the in the RR interval, and like the P wave shows the normal value, and the axis oh. are and the uh the lit one shows the positive value, and lit two also shows the positive value as well, and okay. AVL shows the negative uh value. So the axis is in between the sixty to ninety degree. Okay. And there's no pathological Q wave that we can see in this ECG. Like uh, well, well uh, okay, we have to get a little bit closer because first of all, I cannot see it, but if you're looking at the ST elevation, you do see ST elevation in two, three, and AVF. Okay. Oh, uh, so now, it shows if the, you get yeah. wait, 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 wait. If you get closer, very close, please, Bianca, go very close to the number three, lead number three. Okay, that's an initial R. See, can you see this initial R? So it's starting an initial R, and, and after we do have the ST elevation. So this is not an acute because we do not see pathological Q wave in lead number one, nor lead number two, or AVF, meaning that we do see a... Eh? So... I think inferior like, uh, in, inferior wall infraction. Yeah, I said hyperacute inferior wall MI, nothing else. Now, but because very commonly we do see a posterior extension as well, we should check for the V1, V2. Mm -hmm. Bianca, please go to the V1, V2. Poor girl, she has to work a lot. Okay, this is a little bit further to the right, please and go up to the V1, okay, and go down. Okay, we, oh, a little bit, you should reduce it. Oh, no, it's we don't have any V1. Okay, that's the, no we have only V2. Okay, but there is no ST depression, not too much. Maybe in V3, you can see a little teeny tiny ST depression, but not in V2. So I don't think that we do see any kind of posterior extension. Okay? Yeah. All right, good. Okay, Zanar, the last ECG that we have. Hello, yes, just a second. Okay, and please reduce this. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so, this ECG is rhythmic. Okay. Uh, the heart rate is 50 beats per minute. Okay. Uh, P wave is present. Um, PR interval is normal. I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> no? If you're asking, I think you are not sure. Yeah, the PR is normal. <laughs> <laughs> the QRS is white. It can be okay. seen V one, V two. Okay. Um, if QRS is white, this means okay. um some bundle branch block mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i'm not sure which one i think Why it's not? The right bundle branch yes because you do see the wide r complex in v1 okay the in v1 and v2 you do see this wide r okay so you see a very tall r and wide r ring especially on the left side see you do see a deep wide third S wave. And the axis is deviated to the pathological left one. So it's a right bundle branch ball. Plus, because we do have a extreme left deviation. Extreme left deviation. Oh, I thought the axis is normal. No, it's, it's not normal. First one is the like 
neutral? It's positive. Yes, it's positive. If EF is if EF uh, almost equiphasic, yeah, but and, and about equiphasically number two, well, if you do see that's an extreme blood deviation because it's exactly minus 30, I would expect. Only one thing, because the first part is narrow, but the next one is wider. This is why you have to add a little bit more to the negativity than the positivity, okay? Because relatively, when we are talking about the axis, if the QRS is narrow, we can use the length of the R or the S wave. However, if one is wider, it's meaning that during the depolarization, the axis spend a little bit more time in that way, okay? okay. So this is why I would say that's an extreme left deviation. And again, if you do see anterior hemiblock. Exactly. So we have a right bond bench block plus left anterior hemiblock. Together, this is a bifocicular. Okay, good. Okay, very good. Now let's look at let's look at the Q wave. Um the Q wave in V1, V2, and V3, it's like uh -huh. uh, not normal one. <laughs> okay, good. Um, And also there is ST elevation. Very good. In V2, V3, V4. Okay, so? V5 too. So it should be myocardial infarction, acute okay. one. Okay, and what is the location of this MI? Um anterior exactly anterior i would say that it goes to the v5 as well so anterior lateral i would go for the extensive anterior all right so because okay. very a lot of leads is affected if it's v5 and v6 is already involved you can say that's a lateral one as well so anterior lateral or it's called the extensive one mm -hmm. okay now uh, anybody who arrived later on and hasn't presented anything? Is there anybody? 